Did you know that TikTok is billions of dollars in debt due to TikTok shop? Well, if you didn't know, TikTok's goal is to become the new Amazon. And the reason why they are billions of dollars in debt is because when you see these crazy discounts applied to products, more often than not, TikTok is forking up that cost. They are actually paying the customer money in order for them to buy the product. This is a really smart tactic by TikTok shop because they believe that when they get customers to buy a product, for example, this pen or this notebook, the customers will have a really good experience and therefore come back. So right now, the latest figure I heard is that they are over two billion dollars in debt having offered these crazy discounts to customers. Quite often you'll see a product and think, how on earth can I buy this pen for 50 cents or 50p or uh, half a euro? Well, quite more often than not, if it's listed for five dollars, TikTok is paying that four dollar fifty discount amount out of their own pocket in order for you to use the platform and start purchasing with TikTok shop. How crazy. And that is why I want to talk about TikTok shop being one of the most crazy opportunities right now. I'm currently growing my own TikTok shop as a result of having heard about the insane opportunity that is TikTok shop and follow along for the next few points to understand exactly why I am doing so and why you should do so too. I'm just gonna look down once or twice because my laptop's here. I like to keep my videos nice and candid, not too much editing. It's all about efficiency. I wanna provide maximum value in the least amount of time. So that is why I have my bullet points right here. So TikTok shop, the incredible thing about it is that it makes it so easy to connect with influencers. You might have seen your TikTok feed or for you page divulge into TikTok shop posts or product posts or just bare collaboration, a post. When I say bare, I mean a lot. Sorry, I speak in UK slang sometimes, or I think that's UK. I don't think you guys in US say that kind of thing. But anyway, so many TikTok shop products on your feed now, and that is because the integration for influencers is super, super, super easy. I thought, if I'm gonna have my own TikTok shop, I also need to have my own TikTok business account as an influencer to see how influencers experience TikTok shop and also how I can experience working with an influencer from the other side. So I thought it's best to have both types of accounts so I can understand the journey, the experience from the creator's point of view and also from the TikTok shop business point of view. And I'd encourage you guys, if you are a TikTok affiliate or if you're a TikTok shop or if you have both, to experience both sides of the coin so you can understand what is appealing as a creator, how I can stand out as a brand to creators or how I can stand out as a creator to a brand in order to work with them. Hopefully that makes sense, but that is a massive, massive top tip. That's something I'm doing and it's really helped me to understand, okay, this is what creators are looking for or okay, this is what brands are looking for in terms of creators. So the reason why TikTok shop have made it so easy to integrate with, to create, with creators is when you are a creator, you can receive free samples from TikTok shops and you can receive direct commission from the brands without the brand having to manually pay you. TikTok shop fulfills it automatically when the sale is complete. The creator gets that cut and it's added to like the creator wallet or whatever TikTok call it. And the reason why TikTok shop is so amazing for businesses is because there's literally a whole affiliate section of the TikTok shop where I can find creators that specifically specialize in my product niche and I can target them and send them an invite. I can directly message them as well. I can get access to their, often at times, their email and their phone number. and I can strike a deal with them. Most creators will be happy enough to work with commission. Typically it's between 10 and 20%, but you do see some brands that have a really low cost offerings of 30, 40, 50% commission, and they're almost splitting their profits 50-50 with the creator 
to say a nice thank you for promoting my product and getting a sale. And if you did not believe me yet, the final point is using one classic example that took off towards the back end of last year. And having a, a journal or a notepad here is quite apt because what I'm gonna talk about is the shadow work journal. I saw it popping off on my TikTok feed and the market I'm in wasn't even the biggest market that this journal sold in. So when I go on my TikTok shop and look up the shadow work journal, I'll see like thousands of sales. But from the US market, this product alone did over 200,000 sales just on TikTok shop in one month. That's over $4 million in revenue from a journal that was getting promoted and was trending among, amongst creators. They also sell this journal in many other TikTok shop markets worldwide and they sell it on Amazon. So you can only work out how much money these guys made selling a journal. And what was really good about this journal is that videos were really easy to make because people were talking about like before the end of the year, like cleansing, I don't know, myself or writing down like, I don't know, bad habits or thoughts. I've not divulged into the exact concept of this journal, um, but it was slightly controversial. So you had loads of people commenting on it saying like, oh, you shouldn't do this or it's bad for you. And then loads of people saying, oh, it's great. I did mine. Um, and then creating videos, sharing their experience. So that is just one example alone. One TikTok shop product did that amount of sales. Bear in mind that same seller sells multiple products. The, the, the numbers are astounding. And if you hit it right, if you have a TikTok shop product that hits on that trend, you are in for an amazing run. So I guess with that in mind, my, my best roundup in terms of top tips is if you're already in e-commerce and you have a product, whack it on TikTok shop. Even better if your product is something that people can make videos about, something that's eye-catching or something that's controversial. TikTok, the TikTok algorithm goes crazy for products that get people commenting, get people sharing, just get that engagement, get that attention fixed on the screen. So if you're not in e-commerce, make sure to select a TikTok shop product that obviously is easy to fulfill because I know TikTok shop, the amount of times I've said TikTok shop, it's like a tongue twister. I know TikTok shop has strict requirements on how quick things have to be dispatched and shipping times and sort of your, um, your stand or your quality of your shop is always measured so you know exactly how you're performing and they can close down your shop if you're not performing to metrics. So make sure your systems are in order because all it takes is one creator to create a viral video and you could just be out of stock, no, pro no product orders are getting fulfilled and your shop gets shut down and it's a very unsatisfying win. But the way you set yourself up for success is get those systems in order, I've heard of other creators say you use specific distributors. I'm not sponsored, so I'm not saying any, but people do have integrations directly with TikTok shop and they can source the products for you and they can also fulfill orders. But I would definitely recommend if you're not in on this opportunity to go for it, to try it. It only takes you producing two TikTok videos a day, maybe three a day, four a day, five a day absolute max, but the sweet spot's about three videos a day in order to pr promote a product, it only takes you to reach out to one influencer who creates a video that just trends above all the rest and goes viral. So the opportunity is insane. It's like you can go viral completely organically, but then you also have a really easy way in to, to, to directly connect with influencers that, hundred, that have hundreds of thousands of followers. And you may be thinking, Jordan, like, wh what's your credentials to talk about this? Why, why are you able to talk about this? Well, as I said, I run my own TikTok shop. I've partnered with three different creators where I've sent uh, three, yeah, three creators where I've sent them samples. One had like 20K plus followers and then two had over 100K plus followers. And I was thinking as soon as I got the followers on board, the creators on board that had like 150K, I was thinking, okay, sales are gonna come in. This kickstarts the momentum, but it didn't. And that was because the product I was selling was like artwork that people would receive and it would be like a print like this, like the material, but then they would have to find a frame for it. So when I was sending the product to the creators, 
they just uploaded a video of the product without the frame. So it was probably one of the worst TikTok shop products I could have sold in terms of working with creators because they're, when they've got 12 products that they've been given for free, why are they gonna buy a frame just for mine? Unless they absolutely love it and unless they want to out of the goodness of their own heart, but you can't expect people to go above and beyond in this way of life. I should have just sent them a frame to go with the product, but even then they might not have hung it on the wall or created a nice video. They might have just recorded it on their lap. It's not a guarantee for you to get great videos when you're targeting or collaborating with creators. So you should pick a product that sells itself, no matter how it's recorded, no matter what creator creates a video with it and something that's really easy to fulfill. Obviously the cheaper the product, the better, because then you can send out, I don't know, 50 free samples and it's only cost you a couple hundred bucks. Whereas me, every product I sent out was like between 10 and $30 a pot. So by the time I'd sent out products to three creators, I was like, oh, that's a hundred dollars and I'm making no sales. Maybe I have to pivot a little bit. So that hopefully is food for thought based on my experience and based on the opportunity that is at hand. We are now going to move on to my more personal updates, some value, some thoughts I've been thinking in the past week. So if you just join in for the TikTok shop, make sure to drop me a follow on Instagram where I'll continually give you updates. But the next section of this video is gonna be core updates, what's going on. I'm trying to document my journey since leaving my full-time job a year ago. And here we go. I talked really quickly there, so I feel like I need to have a drink. But anyway, what is new with me? I'm separating the updates now into what is new and what is ongoing and then some thoughts, reflections, motivations, encouragement, what's been on my mind, what's been on my heart. Cool. First one is, I've successfully signed a collaboration with two local property investors which have really big dreams and aspirations. One of them is to grow a really exciting mentorship community. So I'm actually helping them with their content proposition and with their kind of online community growth to bring members in. And hopefully, well, the plan is as a result, I'll be able to secure my own property investment through working with them. And I'll be able to document the journey on here for you guys to see for yourself. And hopefully you will learn some really core takeaways. I know a lot of my channel right now is about online business, but obviously when you've, you've got a business making you money, the idea is to diversify in your investments. And I want to share with you all of kind of the investments and all of that kind of piece. Also, I am looking next to me because I know the window cleaner's in the area, so he might just pop, pop into my garden, use his ladder to shimmy over my, <laughs> over my house or something, I don't know. Uh, so yes, I'm very excited for that opportunity to work with them, see where things go. They've got big goals, we're aligned on many sort of, um, metrics in terms of life and i think it could be a great I, I guess you'd call it a joint venture because we're both bringing things to the table and it's for the collective benefit of us both next update is i i don't know how i feel about this and i guess the best way to express my feelings is to say i've never been to a job interview where i wasn't like a hundred percent set on actually wanting the role. And that is definitely a, that definitely comes from a place of privilege. I completely understand that. I've been blessed to have opportunities where the roles that I'm going for are like exciting or are gonna benefit me, like my career on a super, super long-term. And whereas this could be long-term because it does work with my life, I've got a part-time role which allows me or takes away that financial stress, that financial burden, and will give me that frame of mind to really create and be a bit more free and not to feel trapped in the, oh my gosh, it's been nearly a year and a half since I left my job. I'm not earning money. We're just relying on M's income. What is going on? So obviously that's a bit personal for a random guy online to share with you kind of about the financial situation, but this is raw, this is real, this is my journey. This is the, the reality of trying to grow your own business and documenting it with the world. You're, you're gonna hear these type of takeaways. So I'm very happy to have that uh, part-time job, 
but you guys know my, my whole ethos is I'm the failing entrepreneur. I quit my job in order to put everything I have into the business. But sometimes it just doesn't quite work out the way that you want it to work out and you've got to pivot. You can't be stubborn. There's got to be a point at which you say, okay, cool, this now makes sense. And the great thing is, is that this role, I can get job satisfaction. I'm supporting people that could do with a bit of support in life and could do with a bit of a, I don't know, what's the word? A foot up or a shoulder to cry, whatever the, the, the right wording is. But I feel like I'm, I'll be able to get something from the job that equates to more than money, which will be really, really good. Okay, quickly, I'll say this, because I know the video is getting on. From an ongoing point of view update, morning routine is going strong, prioritizing sleep. I'm dialing down on my diet this week because although I've been exercising quite a bit, the way that I would just like binge a pack of mini eggs or like, I don't know, if, if cake was there, I'd be like, yes, let's have some cake. And I know there's, a, there's an element of enjoying your life, but I'm thinking, why am I working so hard in the gym? Or like working so hard to do things that are going to grow my mind and my discipline if I'm not exercising discipline with what's going into my body. So that's one area I'm trying to dial in on a little bit more. Still growing the Faceless YouTube channel. Um, last week was a bit chaotic with interviews and trying to onboard with the property investors and work out how collaboration will actually work but I'm planning to get back on that just an hour a day, boom, upload a video, long term, slowly but surely grow that brand. Next, as I spoke about at the very beginning of the video, I'm still growing my TikTok shop and I'm also still creating affiliate videos because I believe it's so important to learn the business from both sides of the coin, from the affiliate point of view and also from the business point of view because learning each makes me better at each side of that business, if that makes sense. I'm not gonna explain it again. I've already explained it at the beginning of the video. Next, thoughts and reflections. And this is gonna be quite a, quite a wholesome thought and reflection this week because this is just what's been feeling, it's what's been on my heart. So, life is unpredictable, okay? And really, I would define life as a grand or a great balancing act. You're trying to balance friendships, family, finances, work, hobbies. What am I going to learn in? Investments, short term versus long term, unhealthy versus healthy, fun versus like discipline. It is one heck of a balancing act. And that's the beauty of life is that there's no one way to do things and no one can tell you what you're doing is wrong. No one can tell you what you're doing is right because truthfully, no one knows. No one knows what's going to happen. No one knew we'd have a global pandemic. Is that four years ago? Four years ago, around about this time, four years ago, we go into lockdown. No one knew that. No one could prepare for that. So you've got to give yourself some grace. Perfection is completely unrealistic. So try and be kind to yourself. If that's one takeaway from this video today is perfection is unrealistic, but consistency is key. Life is always going to throw random things at you. You can't control everyone around you. You can't control their decisions. You can't control circumstances. You've just got to be good at adapting and good at being able to control the things you're able to control. And that's where discipline comes into it. If you are disciplined and you develop that frame of mind that I control everything that I can to the best of my ability, and therefore I am in charge of my destiny as much as possible as I can in this world, then that is quite empowering. And that enables you to be kind to yourself because you're doing all that you can but when things do go wrong, you're saying, okay, that's fine. I couldn't control that. But I am controlling the things that I can control. And that's that that gives me confidence. And I hope that gives you confidence. If that's something you're working on too, knowing that you're doing all that you can. Next thing is I was reading an incredible book called The Psychology of Money. 
And the title, despite studying psychology at university or college, you'd say in the US, the title was a bit intimidating to me because I was like, I am not an economist. I don't know about money end to end. Um, so it drew me in, but it also took me a while to pick up the book because I thought, oh gosh, like this is going to be a bit of a headache. Um, but it's actually really powerful and really empowering and it's more wholesome than you would think. So I've just been reading a section about when is enough enough. And it was telling the story of a, a, a guy from India who grew up in the slums and barely had any opportunity. And over the course of his life, he became like a center millionaire, like over a hundred million dollar net worth and got associated with like Goldman Sachs and hedge fund managers and was in and around a circle of billionaires and his goal was to be a billionaire but at one point in his life he ended up insider trading with one of his colleagues when he realized that Warren Buffett was gonna like bail out one of the banks and he decided to invest in that business and of course the stocks went up he made a couple million from it but as a result of the insider trading he then went to jail and the book is basically saying at what point is enough when at what point is enough enough no matter what circle you're in you're always going to compare yourself to the bigger fish in that pond there's always going to be something more and at what point do you say enough is enough if you eat too much at some point you'll throw up and be sick so with money why do people have a different attitude saying i always need more there's a lot of people out there yes that have a good appetite with money that don't strive for material things but particularly in this space I want to be championing the, yes, it's amazing to achieve and to be successful and to grow and self-develop and have discipline, but you need to set yourself a goal at which enough is enough, or you need to have a relationship with money that, that you are not basing your happiness based on the number of zeros in your bank account, but you're basing that on the relationships you have in your life with your friends with your family your memories that you have the way you're growing the way that you're developing the memories the holidays and i know obviously money gives you more opportunities to be happy it gives you opportunities to go on holiday and to travel and not have to work all hours of the day i get that but if you keep striving for things that are beyond sort of the the things that matter in life, then that's where you're going to fall short. And I know it's easy for me to say this when I've, I'm not a multimillionaire yet, but it's something I firmly believe. And I think it's something incredible that we have these stories of billionaires and multi, multi, multi millionaires out there saying that I'm not happy because of money. You hear it time and time again. So at what point are you yourself going to hear that and take notice of it? And actually tell yourself I'm happy I'm happy on my journey I'm happy growing I'm happy taking everything I can from the opportunity or the moment I have lots of people say when they've made it the happiest that they were was on the come up because when they've made it they feel like they've got more to lose more to protect they become more selfish reach out to less people and become more closed in and insular so that's my thought for the day is you've got to think when is enough enough you've got to be kind to yourself knowing that life is unpredictable and you've got to stay disciplined and learn what you can from the journey having that growth mindset and not that fixed mindset so yeah that has been my video of the week it's a longer one but i also think it's really really important to cover some key values key areas of value right from the get-go in terms of a tiktok shop if you've not heard about the opportunity it's incredible. I also want to bring you on my journey. So I want to talk about the updates and I want to leave something with you more than value, more than ways to make money in terms of this is what's been on my heart. This is what I believe you can take into the season. Be empowered, be kind to yourself. As you click off this video, think to yourself, when is enough enough? Maybe write it down, put it in your notes, something to reflect back on. Um, and yeah. As this sign says, right here, it is you versus you. The internet will continue to try and pull you down. If your algorithm's optimized that looking at loads of other entrepreneurs and successful people, you'll always think you're not enough. But you've got to think to yourself, when is enough enough? It's okay to fail. 
because at the end of the day, it's you versus you, it's me versus me. We're all on a journey, so make the most of it. Damn, this is wholesome, let's go. Anyway, take care, drop a follow to my Instagram where I'll, I'll drop more updates throughout the week, and I'll be here next Monday, 4 p.m. for another YouTube video. Take care, God bless, see you soon.